Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant through my company Onyx Reporting. Today, we're going to learn how to calculate, what are we calculating? Percentile ranking within Magic 2.0. Now, I see you. You're thinking about changing the video again. You're like, I don't know what percentile ranking is. Don't worry. Last night, I didn't either. Um, so I had to Google it. And because I had to Google it, and because I learned something, I wanted to make this video and share it with you guys. So what is percentile ranking and why is it important? Percentile ranking um, basically set, takes a set of scores and it answers what percent of scores or values were below this certain point. So in this case, you know, let's imagine I've got test scores and my question is, hey, what percent of people scored 34 or less? The answer is 57. And you're like, Jay, I, I left, you know, college and high school years ago. Why would I care about percent scores? Think about like, you know, you know, A-B testing, right? But like in marketing, for example, and they're like, hey, I, I sent out this ad and here's this uh, the score or respondent rate or something like this. And then I set out this other ad and here is this score and this respondent rate. And if I want to uh, compare the two scores, what percent of people got below a 57? What percent of people got below a 26? Like how does the, the shape of the respondents change between the two test scores or between these two um, things? And if I have five, six, or seven different tests that I'm running, right, it, it creates a very powerful way of seeing how the shape of the respondents changed. Where did this, what are we looking at here? Um, so the Domo user group, this is a Slack group that we set up kind of in parallel to the Domo Dojo. The people in this Domo user group are also in the Domo Dojo. We're always looking for, you know, things to respond to, ways to help each other, ways to exchange ideas. Guys, I love this. Look at this. This question comes in at 9... 29. How long do you think it took to get a response? Four minutes. So again, if you don't know about the Slack user group, ping me at jae at onyxreporting.com. We'll get you an invite. We really look forward to engaging with you. Um, all right, let's copy this and see what this is. This is JSON. I don't know if you knew this, but you can take your magic ETL tiles, like you can take one or several tiles. You can copy them. You can go over here into Domo and you can paste it. Super cool. You can just copy paste chunks of Magic 2.0 tiles. If that's not a reason to get in with, an, with our community, like, I don't know what is. Um, to see where we're going with this, guys, this is the final result here. Um, I've got 16 test scores, and the question, what I really want to see is, I don't want to see, like, how each individual person scored. I want to see 25% of people scored Sorry, three people scored 25% or lower. Eight people scored 50% or lower, right? And I can do this for multiple tests. That's the whole point. Let's see how we build this in Magic. In Magic, the two important things are how do I calculate the numerator and how do I calculate the denominator? How do I calculate dense rank? To calculate dense rank, we're just going to use a window function. And then in this context, we're doing a group by... Um, a couple columns because I want to see how my population performs across different pipelines or different, you know, A, B testing. To get the denominator, I need to know how many rows there are per pipeline. And so I'm doing a group by pipeline name and a couple other columns. And then I'm calculating the count of values. I join that together and then I just do division of the rank divided by the count. Again, guys, I looked at this when John posted and I was like, I don't know what we're doing here. So you should do what I did, which is I calculated it by hand in Excel, right? I said, okay, what's the numerator? The numerator is the rank. What's the denominator? The denominator is the number of scores. One divided by seven is 14. Two divided by seven is 285. If you can do it on paper in Excel, it's much easier to understand how to implement it in Domo. And so I always recommend people doing that. In fact, before we even go to Magic, my first question was, can I do this in Analyzer? And the answer is yes. I've got my test data set here. I've got scores by users in exams. We're going to go ahead and toss together a card. 
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to put aggregation in place. So I'm going to do the sum of score. Now this actually doesn't change the row count because I'm showing each individual test score. So even though I've put aggregation in place, it hasn't changed the granularity of the data, but aggregation is required to do this dense rank, to do this cumulative sum and stuff that we're going to do in just a second. All right, we're going to write a window function to calculate, what are we calculating first? The rank. Now, window functions in Analyzer are a beta feature, so if you don't have it turned on, talk to your CSM or talk to your account representative at Domo and say, hey, I'm looking for this feature, Jay Wilson sent me. So what are we doing? I'm going to take the sum of the min of 1 over order by the sum of score ascending, right? I want to calculate the number of rows ordered by the sum of score. Pop that in there. Is it doing what I think it should be doing? Let me order by the score ascending. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, it's giving me rank. Now, nerd knowledge, the difference between rank and dense rank Dense rank would have been if there were no gap. So one, two, four, four, five. Here, because there's a tie for five, I leave a space for four. So that's undense rank or just normal rank. Um, and the same thing for seven. I have a gap because I have a tie score for 34. OK, so I need rank. Uh, and the denominator, what was the denominator? The denominator was the number of rows. How many rows are there? There are 16 rows. How do I know that? I'm going to take the sum of the min of 1 over, but this time I don't put the order by clause in. This is the same as the grand or subtotal, grand total, whatever language you want to use there but that will give me the total number of rows. Do you see now why I didn't use rank? I didn't use rank because I'm lazy and I don't like explaining things. I'm bad at explaining things, but also this is the same function just without the order by clause. The order by clause gives me a cumulative sum. The Without the order by clause, I get the grand total. And this is how you calculate the percent rank. Boom. So what does this tell me? This tells me that 88% of test takers got an 82 or lower. 31% of test takers got a 22 or lower. Now, again, very useful for doing that A-B testing, but also if you said, hey, I know in my population that I'm only interested in people that were kind of in the middle. So I'm only interested in people that scored between a 33 and a 66 on their percent ranking because those are the middle values and people kind of at the extremes are outliers. What we also might consider doing is say, okay, what is my percent rank between the exams? How does that score change between exams? And so we're going to take the exact same calculation here, but this time we're going to introduce a partition clause. So we're going to partition by exam, and we're going to partition, partition by exam. What this will do is this will reset the counter. Um, and then where's my spelling problem? Part there we go. So what this is doing here now, if I sort by exam, here, is my scoring resets. And so what this is saying is 67% of people who took test 1 scored below an 82. And if I compare that over here, 67 people who took test 2 scored below a 22. So if I were to put um, the splits 33, 67, 100 side by side, I would say, hey, these people scored higher than those people. And that's what this percent rank with this partitioning allows you to do when you're pe comparing populations in like an AB testing or ABC testing scenario. All right, again, this is good. 
this is very good ish it's very difficult to implement case statements and filters on aggregate data and it's particularly perilous with um, window functions so let's take a look at if we can't implement this um, somewhere else now grant uh, our original poster here super smart guy he knows that window functions and case statements aren't great. That's why he leaned towards Magic 2.0. But in Domo, we have a better feature than Magic 2.0. Um, we have the ability to create data set views. Data set views is another beta feature. Again, talk to your CSM, let them know Jay Wilson sent you. Now, what this will allow us to do is basically all of the same stuff we did in Analyzer. But first, remember, we have to implement our grouping. So I'm going to group by user. I'm going to group by exam. I'm going to take the sum of score. Again, the granularity doesn't change. The number of rows doesn't change because I have user and, and exam in the group by clause. But because it's aggregated, I can now implement my window function. So I'm going to do sum of the min of 1 over order by sum of score ascending. I'm going to divide by the sum of min of 1 over and no window. And this will be my percent rank. Hopefully. Please work. Wicked. Wicked. Let me sort by score ascending. Does it give me the right stuff? Ascending. sure does. Now I can also in one move implement hopefully partition by exam and don't break. Ha! Success! And again, I have my two uh, window functions in place. I can save this. Now what's super cool about data set views is it does create the equivalent of a SQL view. And what's more powerful about views as opposed to Magic 2.0 is that when my raw data or my incoming data changes, I get a new set of scores or I, I've finished the upstream data flow, a view will execute instantaneously in seconds as opposed to a magic 2.0 data flow which could take longer. Now of course um, this all depends on the volume of data that you're dealing with but this is one of the key reasons why I endorse data set views despite occasionally this beta feature can be buggy. All right let's see about building our card. So I've got my score, I've got my percent rank, and my rank by exam. Okay, now recall, this is now being fed by a data set view, not the raw data set. And what's powerful about window functions and data set views is I can now build case statements off of them. So I can say um, maybe is keep. And I can say case when the percent rank is less than or let's say greater than or equal to 33 and percent rank is less than or equal to 66 then keep else toss right I'm only interested in the middle set of values what did I misspell ah this is a string sorry and I need an end Good Lord. So now I can create a filter called, why don't I have any keeps? Case when percent rank is greater than or equal to 33 and it's less than or equal to 66. Ah, decimals. Sorry for yelling at your keyboard. Jay, get it right! <laughs> so I can now 
apply a filter on what historically would have had to been filter on a having clause, which is another beta slash alpha feature. Um, but this allows you to write that case statement on um, a window function or an on an aggregate, which is, again, something not possible in base domo. Very powerful. The last permutation, and this is what we opened up with, was if I want to do something like um, uh, score categories, where I'm doing something like, K I don't like that. Please stop. I don't, I don't know why. Stop that. I don't want the default to include parentheses. That's ugly. Case when percent rank is less than or equal to 0.25, then 0.25. Case when percent rank is less than or equal to 0.5, then 0.5. Case when percent rank is less, less than or equal to 0.75, then 0.75, else 1. End. So now what I can do is, let me drop some of this stuff I'm not interested in. I can take account of it, can't I? And so this tells me, hey, three people scored less than 0.25, five people scored between 0.5 and 0.25, four people scored between 0.75 and 0.5. And if you want to know how many scored 0.75 or less, we go back to that cumulative sum, which is the sum of the sum of the score over order by score, the sum of score ascending. What does that, no, that's not what I want. I don't want the cumulative sum of score. I want the cumulative row count. So that's going to be the cumulative number of scores. There you go. Three people scored 25 or less. Eight people scored 50 or less. 12 scored 75 or less. Guys, that's the end of our journey. My name's Jay Wilson. Today, we took a look at calculating percent rank, percentile ranking in Magic 2.0. The big learning points. Join the Domo community because people will answer your questions quickly. Um, and in Magic 2.0, you can copy paste blocks of tile um, across well, text editors across Magic ETL and so on. The hardest part in Domo always is, can you articulate in plain English the problem that you're trying to solve? Can you do us a quick example in an Excel spreadsheet and then interpret that into code? We looked at doing a couple of window functions. That's not a window function. None of those are window functions. We looked at implementing a couple of window functions, both in Magic